So, I got a question for you guys. When do you think we're going to be able to stop talking about what happened on January 6th? Do, do, do you guys think it's going to be a thing that we're going to be able to do? Because I really don't. I really don't think so, unfortunately. Uh, but before we do that, let's go ahead and talk about the fan art section. So, from Unseen, or also uh, Doom Prophet, they said the second preview, hopefully they can get the last four pieces done soon. This is of Rogue Raz. Honestly? Perfect. With that said, if you want your fan art to be shown in a future video, the best way to do so is drop it into the fan art section of the Discord. Thank you for your fan art submission, and let's go ahead and talk about January 6th shit. As always... Let's roll that intro. <laughs> Yay, for everybody who's on Twitch, you have to hear me awkwardly say, let's roll the intro, but an intro never plays. Okay, let's go ahead and see here. So, Hillsdale College. What is this place? Let's go ahead and take a look here. We're going to do a little bit of research. I am not familiar with them. Hillsdale College is a selective top-ranked uh, college in Michigan known for classical liberal arts and its independence from government funding. Oh, wait. Hold on. Do you do you guys know? Wait. Do you guys already know what this is? It is a private conservative liberal arts college in Hillsdale, Michigan. Oh, boy. Oh, cool. So we already know exactly what we're getting into. Let's go ahead and read. So apparently, uh, this dude says that the January 6th, insurrection, uh, January 6th insurrection was a hoax. Now, I've done a tiny bit of reading on this article already. I didn't want to read through all of it because I wanted to make sure that this would still be an authentic uh, reaction. But let's go ahead and read it itself. Okay. It points out that uh, the following is adapted from a lecture delivered at Hillsdale College on September 20th, 2021, uh, during a Center for Conservative Alternatives conference on critical American elections. Because, of course it would be. Let's go ahead and continue through with what we've got here. Notwithstanding all the hysterical rhetoric surrounding the events of January 6th, 2021, two critical things stand out. The first is what happens when much more uh, was much more hoax than insurrection. In fact, in my judgment, it wasn't an insurrection at all. So, first paragraph, let's go ahead and uh, respond to that. So, what would you call a an uprising at the Capitol where people were constantly beating down uh, law enforcement officers uh, and they had to defend them, uh, defend uh, you know, the offices of people like AOC and what what would you call that? I, I just, just From me to you, what would you call that? Peaceful protest? Yeah, I wouldn't call it that. I wouldn't call it that. They literally, literally stormed into, like, not, like, freaking non public areas. They stormed into Capitol Building. They started going through private emails and shit like that. That is not. To call that anything but, and it's, but, you know, an attempted insurrection is kind of strange to me. It really is. Uh, but we have a, a lovely dictionary definition here. An insurrection, as the dictionary will tell you, is a violent uprising against a government or other established authority. Did violence happen during this? Yes. Uh, was it about reinstating their favorite Orange Cheeto Man instead of actually letting democracy do what it normally does and vote in the person who actually won the election? Yes. It, it, it Textbook, then, would be a, a violent uprising against our government or established authority because, well, we'd already inaugurated Biden. It, thank you for owning yourself with the dictionary. You did it. You, you did it. 
Unlike the violent riots that swept the country in the summer of 2020, riots that caused some 2 billion in property damage and claimed more than 20 lives, the January 6th protest at the Capitol building in Washington lasted a few hours, caused minimal damage, and the only person directly killed was an unarmed female Trump supporter who was shot by a Capitol police officer. It was, as Tucker Carlson said shortly after the event, a political protest that got out of hand. Uh, so we're going to take the words of Tucker Carlson, the guy who li who legally cannot be taken seriously. That was the defense that Fox News actually used for Tucker Carlson and anything he says on his show. Really, that's the person we're going to use for our uh, our summation of the event. OK, so let's talk about the difference in these areas here. What is a BLM protest? A BLM protest is a protest against being killed. It is about your life as a, a, a minority group in the United States mattering more than what the police data would suggest. So the fact that there were hundreds, hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of those protests and only 20 lives were claimed when one life got claimed during the single fucking uh, event here, probably not the best uh, comparison here. We don't exactly have the same scale models to operate uh, where these things are concerned. Let's talk about what was being protested. During the height of the BLM protests, we were protesting the death of George Floyd, specifically the fact that this was indicative of a larger societal issue. What's being protested during the January 6th event? Orange man, good. Old man who flubs his words, not good. Democracy, wrong. Why did Georgia go blue? My dick is small. Not really that last one. That one's more a circumstance than anything. But point is, these are not the same thing. And comparing them uh, in this way especially with the Tucker Carlson offhand statement at the end there. Not really, uh, well, I'll just go ahead and call it disingenuous. Let's go ahead and continue. As the rally preceded the events in question, Donald Trump had suggested that people march the Capitol peaceful and patriotically. These were his exact words. In order to make their voices heard, he did not incite a riot, he stirred up a crowd. Can you say can you say those things like directly next to each other within the context of what happened and pretend that they're not at least eerily similar here? I didn't start a I didn't incite a riot. I just stirred up a crowd that happened to riot. What? <laughs> okay. Tomato tomato, who the fuck cares? Was that given the circumstances imprudent? Probably. Was it an effort to overthrow the government? Hardly. So Donald Trump telling them to storm the Capitol uh, and literally saying over and over again that he, he would not leave office even if the count showed that he lost. What does that read to you? What, what How does that read to you as a human being? Because to me... Yeah, you might say that that's not overthrowing the government, but that is certainly overthrowing our current model of democracy. Because once the people had chosen their next president, you obstinately fought to maintain that position of power. But let's go ahead and continue. How much of this article do we have? Let's highlight where we are and figure out... Oh my god! How is there so much of this here? It's like a BGR article, but they want Trump's toenails. Okay, let's keep going. I know this is not the narrative that we will have been instructed to parrot. Indeed, to listen to the establishment media and our political masters, the January 6th protest was a dire threat to the very fabric of our nation. The worst assault on our democracy since 9-11, Pearl Harbor, and even according to Joe Biden last April, since the Civil War. Well... 
actually, yeah, if we're talking about what our democracy is, one of the functions of our democracy is to actually in, uh, elect the next president. And if you're protesting against that election specifically here, then this is actually an attack on our democracy. Again, they even did, there were people in there that were even saying shit like, let's go ahead and hang fucking Mike Pence because Mike Pence wasn't sticking to his guns in the Trump crowd. Note the phrase, our democracy. Nancy Pelosi, Joe Biden, and various talking heads have repeated it ad nauseum. But you do not need an advanced degree in hermeneutics to understand what they mean by our democracy. It is their oligarchy. Similarly, when Pelosi talks about the people's house, she doesn't mean a house that welcomes riffraff like you and me. So, okay, again, let's point by point go through this fucking shit. So... Hermeneutics is not important for this shit, of course, right. Uh, when they say our democracy, no, this does mean our democracy. Now, granted, the United States, between Republicans and Democrats, does function a little closer to oligarchy than I would like, and I'm perfectly okay accepting that that is an unfortunate observation on our political reality, but that has to do with the power of various corporations, not necessarily the political parties themselves, but... Again, hand in hand and all that shit. Uh, similarly, when Pelosi talks about the people's house, she doesn't mean a house that welcomes riffraff like you and me. When they say the people's house, they're talking about the place where the people's work gets done. Passing laws, amending laws, stuff like that. It's, it's literally just re uh, rhetoric. To argue that it's not for riffraff like you or me, literally anybody can get elected into there. If you don't believe that anybody can get elected into there, please see Marjorie Taylor fucking green. But okay. They just alluded to Ashley Babbitt, the unarmed supporter of Trump, who was shot and killed on January 6th. Her fate brings me to a second critical thing to understand about the insurrection hoax, namely that it was not a standalone event. On the contrary, what happened that afternoon and what happened afterwards is only intelligible when seen as a chapter in the long-running effort to discredit and ultimately to dispose of Donald Trump, as well as what Hillary Clinton might call the deplorable popular sentiment that brought Trump to power. So, yes... Blind populism did bring Trump to power, and yes, we do need to hold problem with that. Uh, Tucker Carlson is notably a populist as well for the right wing, so that's definitely checks out here. But uh, to say this is only intelligible through the long-running effort to discredit, no. This is more intelligible when looking at the actual historical lens of Donald Trump's presidency. The fact that the dude, literally, if you compare the things that he did to what you would expect in a fish in, like... We did a whole fucking comparison uh, on Trump's beliefs, statements, and actions to er, fascism. And he hit enough of the points to be, let's go ahead and say, concerning. Also, disposing of Donald Trump, this is what democracy does. We dispose of our last presidents. We don't keep people in power for that long. That's If you're, if you're upset about that, then you're upset that we have, a, we have democracy in the United States. Yes, we are a republic, but... We do things democratically through our representatives. But let's go ahead and continue here. In other words, to understand the January 6th insurrection hoax, you have to understand that other long-running hoax, the Russia collusion hoax. The story of that hoax begins back in 2015, when the resources of the federal government were first mobilized to spy on the Trump campaign, to frame various people close to Trump, and eventually to launch a full-throated criminal investigation on the Trump administration. I hate to tell you this, but... The FBI and the government spies on every president. Every one of them. Every single one. If you don't think they do, then you are severely deluded about the position that a president actually holds. From before Trump took office, the Russia collusion hoax was used as a pretext to create a parallel administration shadowing the elected administration. Remember the Steele dossier and the fantastical document confected by the well-regarded former British spy Christopher Steele? We know now that it was only relevant... Pr uh, it was the only relevant predicate for ordering face awards to spy on Carter Page and other American citizens. Okay, so... Does our government spy on us? Yes. Is that a good thing? In most cases, no. 
let's not forget where a lot of the precedent for this actually began, though, and that was with Republican President George W. Bush in office. If you don't like your home being spied on all the time by the government and do and and that happening legally, then maybe let's talk about reevaluating the Patriot Act. So does this guy full Q? He sounds like it. Fuck if I know. Fuck if I know. So we have a lot more in here. Let's see what else there is here. The public learned that the Democratic National Committee paid for the manufactured evidence only because of court order. James Comey, the disgraced former director of the FBI, publicly denied knowing who paid for it, but emails from a year earlier proved that he knew all along. And what was the penalty for lying in Comey's case? He got a huge book deal and toured the country denouncing Trump to gleeful satisfaction of his anti-Trump audiences. Yeah, a lot of people capitalized on being anti-Trump. That's not news. What was true of Comey was also true of the entire intelligence apparatus from former CIA director John Brennan to Congressman Adam Schiff and other Democratic members of the House Intelligence Committee to senior members of the FBI. All of these said publicly that they had seen clear evidence of collusion with Russia, but they admitted under oath behind closed doors that they hadn't. All right. So... We've got a whole lot in here talking about how Trump definitely rightfully became president. I'm okay fucking just saying, yeah, we, we democratically elected Trump. I don't fucking care about the Russia collusion shit. Never. I don't. Truly. Also, uh, Botch Pro, thank you for the follow. Like, I just, I just quite frankly don't. So let's go and move on to more stuff about January 6th specifically. Because again, I'm not really caring too terribly much about the other part. The indisputable fact about Gen 6 is that although five people died at, our near, at or near the Capitol on that day or soon there... Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, you said one death. Wait, you said there was one. Now there are five? Which one is it, my dude? Five people died at or near the Capitol, despite what I said earlier in the article. None of these deaths was brought about by the protesters. The shot fired by Capitol Police Officer Michael Byrd that hit Ashley Babbitt in the neck and killed her was the only shot fired at the Capitol that day. No guns were recovered from the Capitol on January 6th. Zero. Are you saying that nobody at the fucking protest who visibly had guns had guns? Okay. Sure thing. I believe you. Definitely. 110%. I guess the fact that, you know, five people did die is immaterial. Four of the five who died then were Trump protesters, and the fifth? Well, that was Officer Sicknick, also a Trump supporter as it turns out, who, contrary to the false report gone viral in the New York Times, went home, told his family he felt fine, but died a day later, as the Washington Post eventually and grudgingly reported natural causes. No fire extinguishers were involved in his demise. Wait. So if he, if, if, if a ton of shit happens to you one day and then you feel fine because your body's in shock and then you die the next day because you didn't receive proper medical help, suddenly you just, no, that's not how that fucking works. This is all just literal. Yeah, no, you're right. This is technicalities. Hits, uh, hits Susan. He's grabbing a bunch of technicalities and using those to try to build a case here. So can we talk about some of the stuff that he's not brought up in the article? And if there's more in the article, then fucking let me know. Uh, but not included in this article is any acknowledgement of the fact that Rhodes, the Oath Keeper leader, made an explicit public threat to wage civil war if Trump didn't remain in power. Ah, yes, but this is definitely not an interaction. insurrection. Uh... The article also didn't touch on the evidence presented by the prosecutors in multiple indictments of the Oath Keepers that members of the group conspired to commit violence that day. Uh, Kimball concludes in this article. Let's go ahead and scroll down here. Uh, 
Let's go ahead and take a look at the end of the article real quick. Note the power of the little word if. It is not so long ago that an American could contemplate totalitarian regimes and say, thank God we've escaped that. It is not all clear that we can entertain the happy conviction any longer. That's one melancholy lesson of the January 6th insurrection hoax, that America is fast mutating from a republic, in which individual liberty is paramount, into an oligarchy, in which conformity is increasingly demanded and enforced. Another lesson was perfectly expressed by Donald Trump when he reflected on the unremitting tsunami of hostility that he faced as president. Thereafter, you, I'm just in the way. So let's go and pretend that Trump is a fucking pariah, I guess. But that's not necessarily fucking true. Also, can <laughs> projection 100 stealth 100, illusion 100. So again, uh, the one bit that I do agree with there is that yes, America is looking more and more like an oligarchy than an actual democracy that I would like than the republic that it is supposed to be. Yes, I understand that. A lot of that has to do with the power that corporations and money have in everything. The fact that you can literally buy positions in politics is a problem. But... We have a hydrate from Hitsune. Those buffoons shouldn't be allowed to dehydrate you. I shall do so. Natty Maddie, thank you for redeeming your points for an owl. Oh well. Owl. Oh well. So, the conclusion here is that one melancholy lesson of the January 6th insurrection hoax is that America is fast mutating from a republic in which individual liberty is paramount into an oligarchy in which conformity is increasingly demanded. But let's go ahead and point out that Hillsdale College... It distinguishes itself by disavowing any government money, including student financial aid, grants, or loans. I'm just going to point out right now, if ever projection had a word, it would be here. Mr. Krabs, thank you very much for redeeming your points for an ada ada. You fucking monster. Again, as much as I as much as I want to agree with the point on oligarchy, the manifestation of that point is not something that I actually agree with. But what we have here is an article that is trying to paint Trump as basically God Emperor. It literally begins with a quote from Tucker Carlson and ends with a quote from Donald Trump. That people are after you, individual citizens, and Trump is somehow the shield in the way. This reads like bad propaganda, and we only went through 60% of it, because quite frankly, I don't have the wherewithal or time to read the entire damn thing. But prior to this, I didn't know what Hillsdale College was, and now I do, so that's interesting. That's at least a bit a bit there. They also don't seem to realize that oligarchies are generally conservative. Yeah, generally. Almost as if corporate interests generally happen to, you know, be favored more on the economic right than on the left, but... Don't forget the article writer called himself out as online on the body count. Yeah. I wonder if there's anything else we can find uh, about... New criterion here. I wonder. Let's see. Ba ba da ba ba ba. Okay, sources are pending on new criterion, apparently. Let's take a look here and see what we can find on Wikipedia. 
It was funded in 1982 by New York Times art critic Hilton Kramer. He cited his reasons for leaving the paper to start the new criterion as disguising uh, the disgusting and deleterious doctrines with which the most popular of our reviews disgrace its pages. The dishonesties and hypocrisies and disfiguring ideologies that nowadays affect criticism of the arts. His decision to leave the New York Times. I don't care about the decision to leave the New York Times. Uh, in the first issue... The magazine set out to speak plainly and vigorously about the problems that beset the life of an artist and the mind of our society. And a more general cultural drift. Okay. So it's about art. That's what... See, he's the editor and publisher of the new Criterion. So maybe we need to look at Roger Kimball himself. He's an American critic and social commentator. Uh, let's see here. Early life, list of works. He was educated at Chavez High School, a Jesuit institution. He received a BA in philosophy and classical Greek. After graduating, he attended Yale. He... And then there's a bunch of his listed works here. Nothing real meaty. Seems like a real boring person just sucking Trump's mushroom. Awkward. But there we are, I suppose. Sometimes we just find boring. Sometimes episodes just end up boring. Apologies for that. Ugh. I'm curious. Wait, what? Did you hear about the college that's building a dorm building that'll essentially be a prison? What? No, I have no idea what that is. But, anywho. Well, Roger, we read your dumb your dumb speech. I don't know how to feel about it. Except, just, bored. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think. I am very low energy. I can't wait for this vacation. I can't wait to just go. <laughs> Anyways. As always, everyone, let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you want to support my channel and what I do, you know how to do that. As always, though, insert end of video tagline here. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. It really means a lot to me. If you want access to behind-the-scenes content for the channel, please consider checking out my Patreon. I do weekly vlogs over there where I give uh, real-life updates to what's going on behind the scenes on the channel, stuff that you don't really get uh, over here and, and even on Twitch. Uh, Patreon also helps the channel's stability a whole lot. Without Patreon, I wouldn't be able to do this at all. Especially with the kind of content that I do, neither YouTube nor Twitch are the most stable sources of income. If you are a $20 and up patron, then you will be featured on the ending slides as shown in the beginning of the end credits. If you want to catch the streams where all this content comes from, then consider heading over to Twitch and following. And if you want to continue watching over here on YouTube, maybe consider clicking one of the end screen videos. And once again, I want to thank you so much for spending your time with me over on my channel. I wouldn't be able to do literally anything that I'm doing over here on YouTube without each and every one of you. So thank you.